Hello and welcome to this fourth producer's notes for DCS Black Shark. Uh, in this note, we're going to take a look at the navigation systems of the Black Shark. Those consist of the GPS system integrated here in the Abrus. Then within the PVI 800, we have the inertial navigation system. And then back here on this panel, we have the um, ADF uh, radio system which allows you to home in on non-directional beacons. Now, regarding the beacons, uh, each airfield in Black Shark has both an inner and outer uh, NDB. And when tuned into the proper channel of that NDB, you can receive uh, RMI steering on the HSI or on the Avers uh, towards that beacon. Uh, additionally, you can put it in an audio mode where the beacon will transmit a Morse code uh, which is unique uh, to that particular beacon. So here on the uh, ADF panel, um, we have either the um, direction mode or the audio mode. Right now it's in direction. We can do a test on that by hitting the test button. And you'll notice that on the HSI you can see the RMI needle spinning. So that looks good. Uh, what we can also do is put it back in audio mode and by pressing the key we get an audio tone. And also the, uh, the knob here selects one of eight different um, airfield presets, uh, each airfield having uh, two beacons. Now the list of air airfields in the preset are up here on the placard here. Uh, right now in this mission number one is the airfield we're located at and we're flying to number two. And periodically, you're going to hear the code for the airfield that we're at right now, number one, which is selected on the dial. But we'll go ahead and actually select this uh, back to um, direction mode, and then we'll set the knob to uh, number two, which is the airfield that we're flying to. Over here on the other radio panel, uh, right now we have it in antenna mode, which is great. Uh, we have a built-in test, squelch, we can have it either an AM or FM, uh, emergency code, so, and, um, oh, the range of either 50 or 100 kilometers, but that all looks good there as well. Um, so the next thing we'll take a look at here is, again, the PVI 800 uh, panel for the inertial navigation unit. Um, along the left side are the main operating modes um, of the INU, uh, the first being the waypoint mode, which is highlighted here at the top. Now, the K50 can store up to six waypoints, and to select those, you simply select the mode and then um, punch in the uh, number that corresponds to the waypoint you want to select. Uh, in this mission, I have uh, four waypoints entered, so uh, five and six uh, don't do anything. Um, here you have the coordinates, um, the distance, and the, um, uh, the name of that waypoint. Um, the next one down is your INU, uh, Inertial Navigation Unit, reference point. Now in the mission editor, you can set up to four uh, reference points, um, mainly because during the course of a mission, as the aircraft is flying around, uh, the INU starts to accumulate errors uh, in positioning. By placing these INU reference points, it gives the helicopter a means uh, to assess a fixed waypoint in reference to where it is right now and update that system. So uh, in this mission, I have, I have placed two INU reference points. And I can select these by, again, going to INU uh, fixed point mode and then select either one or two in this case. And we'll see this uh, in operation later in the mission. Uh, the next one down is for our airfields. The uh, number one is your takeoff field, and number two is your landing field. The next one down is for your target points. Like the INU points, you can place these in the mission editor, um, but you can actually place up to 10 of these in the editor. And um, like the INU points, you go to the mode and then you select the number of that target point uh, according to the keyboard number. And again, we'll also see how you can directly navigate to those points using the autopilot. Um, other modes uh, within the uh, PVI 800 panel uh, include the ability to see your current coordinates, uh, 
range bearing and time to the next uh, point, be it a waypoint, INU point, or target point, uh, weather conditions uh, in terms of airspeed, uh, direction, and speed, uh, navigation to the uh, final waypoint, and then navigation to your targeting point. And these uh, alongside here are modes to align the system. Uh, we have the keyboard, and then of course we have a cancel button and an enter button. So the primary mode most people will be using, again, is the waypoint mode, uh, which allows you to manually select uh, your waypoint. In this case, I'll have main uh, waypoint two selected right now. Here on the, the mode panel, right now we're in normal mode, but we can back up to the um, edit mode, and this allows us to edit the coordinate of any of our six uh, waypoints. To do so, we would um, go to uh, waypoint mode. Uh, it shows us the total number of waypoints in the system. We select the waypoint we want to edit, say number three in this case. Um, then we enter the coordinates. Now, if I wanted to, I could hit the enter button now and replace the current coordinate for number three with the ones I just entered. Um, but I really don't want to do that, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit the cancel button. And I'll now go back to normal mode and select waypoint two. Um, also, here on the PVI 800 panel, um, we have the, um, the mode of how you want to update your INU. Um, you could do it as flying over the fixed point, or you could lock up the fixed point with the Schwal sensor. Um, then the next switch here is for your power to your data link, and the knob here is for your brightness of the display. Uh, below that uh, is the panel for uh, more data link information, which we'll talk about in a later uh, note. Uh, then you have your autopilot panel. Um, the two important uh, things here are you have this uh, switch to select between uh, altitude sources being barometric or radar and then to the right of that you have a three position switch which allows you to determine the means that the autopilot will uh, do an automatic route flight to the next waypoint. When it's in the up position it will go do a direct uh, flight bearing to that point or from the down position, it will go to that uh, point along the route line. You can also place it in the middle and then turn off uh, waypoint modes altogether. And by um, initiating the autopilot, it will go um, in a fixed bearing and altitude along your current direction of travel. Uh, let's put that, that. Okay, so that's a little overview of the navigation systems. Now we'll go ahead and take off and we'll look at those in operation as well as some of the um, various autopilot modes that we can take advantage of through the PVI 800. I'll also go ahead and uh, put the pilot back on. Okay. Thank you. 